Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I've got a Molly filter to look at. Molly is the pronunciation that is favored in North America, while Mala is more of what you're going to hear <laughs> from Europe. And if you go on to the Molly website and look at some of their videos on their technicals and things like that, you actually hear it pronounced both ways. Molly, Mala. Somebody online I've heard call it male, but I just think that's straight up incorrect. So I just want to get that out of the way before we start an argument in the comments about it. But anyway, uh, my first impression when I opened this, uh, opened this guy, got out of the box, and this is an OC500 model specifically. But the first thing I thought when I pulled it out of the box was, oh, I've seen that gasket before, and I've seen that five inlet hole pattern before. So I dug through my filter collection, and I found that the K&N Performance Silver, it looks like it uses the exact same gasket style, but the inlet holes look an awful lot like the Amsoil Mobile One Royal Purple type, which all have the same base plate, but I was actually mistaken about that because if you look closely at the Amsoil base plate, for example, you've got five holes, one of which is extra large, and that's how all those are that I just mentioned. That is not so with the Molly filter. They're all the same size, so I'm... This is actually a different a different base plate, and just looking in the holes from the side, I can tell visually that the base plate on the Molly is not quite as thick, and that sort of comes out in the weight. When I weigh this guy, it comes out to 268 grams. The Mobile One Amsoils are in the 290-300 range, so that... I've used weight before as kind of a general idea of robustness for filters. You can get it, you can kind of tell if the case is going to be extra thick or the plate's going to be extra thick, and that can kind of be a proxy for build quality and burst pressure, maybe. So uh, this is definitely not the lightest filter I've I've come across for this application, but it's it's not really up there with the higher end either. So take that for what it is. The price on this guy was about ten fifty from Amazon. It's nice you can get it from there. Amsoil, which you can't really get at big box stores, costs it can cost a lot if you're gonna try to just order one online and have it shipped and you don't have Amazon Prime. So this ten fifty was the Amazon Prime price. But um ten bucks is again kind of in the middle is in terms of pricing. So in a lot of my videos for oil filters, I like to get kind of heavy into the technicals, which has some, I'll admit, limited value. Because if I talk about things like total inlet area, or the number of threads, or the, the thickness of the case, or even the total square footage or square the area measurement of the filter cartridge itself, that'll tell you a lot about the filter, but without things like dirt capacity and filtration efficiency and you know what size what, what's the micron size of the particles that the manufacturer is you know trying to filter out with their particular build you don't get the complete picture and when i looked on the molly website they don't have filter specific publications for that type of stuff so i could take all these measurements but i don't know all those things which is unfortunate but since that's the case, I don't see the value in going really heavy into these little measurement -y type of things. So I did get out similar filters just for a side-by-side -side comparison type of thing. But what I'm really going to try to focus on in this video is more of just let's get our eyeballs on it and look at it from a build quality standpoint more so than a technical one. But one more, one more thing on that that I do want to mention is as far as Molly is concerned, while they don't have data sheets on individual filters, what I did see was a pretty impressive write-up on their Molly aftermarket page where they discuss filters in general. It was full of some pretty good information because it, it kind of went into detail on the industry trend primarily towards increased service lives. So this Mobile One filter that I reviewed quite a while ago, it offers 20,000 miles worth of protection, which is a lot. 
And the, the Molly write-up discusses that trend and some of the drivers behind it. Changing chemistries for both oil and fuel. And fuel chemistry is actually, in some cases, getting less favorable just due to increased ethanol and things like that. So you've got maybe dirtier fuel, but you have better oil chemistry and you have oil condition sensors in your vehicle and your vehicle can also take into account your driving style and habits when it computes when you need to change your oil next and it talks about how molly filters are engineered according to those changing things which i thought was really cool so i'll stop talking about it but if you want to read that right up it was pretty neat actually so all that said I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy open so we can take a look at the filter cartridge inside. Okay, so I just cut this guy open, and I did not notice it until halfway through shooting a video. But when I popped this guy open and pulled the cartridge off, there was no anti-drainback valve here, which there always is from other filters. And I'll play the clip right now of when I opened it, just to prove to you that I didn't just lose it or I'm making some type of false claim. It was not in here. So I don't know if that's a mistake or if this is just an older design that they're no longer going with because I, when I look on the uh, Molly site, it does say something about availability just being while supplies last so it could be the design is being upgraded or something and they're changing it but that's the first time i've ever seen a filter not include uh, a jack valve for preventing dry starts and their website even talks about preventing dry starts so strange interesting but anyway uh, i cut this guy open using my brand new can opener style cutter, which I should have bought a long time ago. I'll put a link below. It won't be an affiliate link, but uh, it is pretty neat if you're going to cut a lot of these like I do. So anyway, um, the filter itself. I'm going to cut the cartridge open further to get a, a closer look at the center tube and um, the bypass valve assembly and the uh, pleats themselves. But there are a few things I noticed on this cartridge right when it opened up. And the very first thing was this band here. I've never seen a stabilizing band on any filters that fit this particular application for this size vehicle, which I, I try to always buy filters that go to the same car just for it, keeping things consistent. Never seen one of these on there. I've always assumed, though, that these are adhered to the pleats to keep them from collapsing into one another. I think it's called block forming, if I recall correctly, from the Molly site where that's actually discussed specifically. But when I got playing with it, I noticed that this band can just kind of free flow down here, up and down, and it can spin too. So I don't know if that's intentional or not either. That's a little bit strange because I figure if it just flops to one end, it won't do its job quite as well. And I don't know how exactly that prevents pleats from collapsing on each other, although they do feel nice and stiff, I will say. I'm not sure it needs it, unless the sole purpose of this thing is just to keep pleats from maybe liberating if you abuse it hard enough. I'm a little confused by that. But anyway, the other thing I noticed that was different than anything I've seen before is just this bypass valve. It looks like it's injection molded, and I don't think I've seen that style before, so we'll have to take a closer look at that when I cut this open. Uh, other than that, they did have a coil spring on the top, which is, I prefer that to the leaf spring style. Not a huge deal, though. Uh, the case is 20 thousandths thick, which all the cases I've ever seen for this application are either 15 thousandths thick or 20. Most are 20, but this is the heavier gauge. So I think that's it. Let me go ahead and chop this guy. All right, so I went ahead and cut open the cartridge so you can see a little more clearly what's going on on the inside. You can see how tightly those pleats are packed in there, and there's a little better close-up of the bypass valve assembly. Nice beefy coil spring there. Kind of nicked it with the grinder, but that looks pretty neat. Uh, and here's just here's just the uh, the bottom portion of it right there. There's your band, the stabilizing band. It's awfully thin. I haven't tried to break it. Doesn't mean it's not tough. 
Here is the paper element itself. This looks like it's just a normal cellulose. The length is 63 and a half inches. For comparison, the Mobile One, I saved a paper from that. It was a little bit shorter, but I think back when I cut open the Mobile One, I didn't think to measure the height. So I don't have the total filter area for that, but I have since started calculating that for everything I do going forward. And that's 102.6 square inches of filter media. Also, I wanted to point out that for comparison's sake, the mobile one. This is what I meant by the glue going all over the place. Don't know if I, meant, I mentioned that in the beginning, but you can see it's kind of everywhere on the mobile one, but Molly is nice and clean. And for anyone who's not familiar, this is what the, or the uh, anti drain back valve is supposed to look like if you have one. It's just a little check valve so that when filter enters through these holes in the bottom of the base plate, oil will stay in the filter when you shut your engine off and it won't drain out, which is just for preventing cold starts, which is not good for your engine. So I don't know, again, why Molly didn't have one of these, but that's what that's supposed to look like. So there you go. That's all I had on the Molly. Hope this was... Uh, Helpful? Thanks for watching.